Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video where we are looking at Pico CTF 2022. In the last video, we literally just ran a binary and we got the flag. So let's move on to something a little bit more fun, hopefully, and uh, we'll take a look at the forensics category here and see what we're up against. Hop over to my screen here, and I am looking at the forensics category. Next challenge here is called file types that only has 520 solves at the time of recording when everything else is over a thousand. So I don't know, have we have we ran into something new? Uh, this file was found among some files marked confidential, but my PDF reader cannot read it. Maybe yours can. You can download the file from here. Okay, let's copy that link address and let's get to it. We know we're working in the forensics category. Well, we're going to make a directory called file types as the name of this challenge. Let's w get to download this file. And we have a allegedly flag.pdf, but I don't trust it. So I'm going to run file on that command. And it says it is a shell archive text. Excuse me? Is it just plain text? Yeah, apparently. Uh, okay, this is a shell archive produced by GNU Shar Utils? Shell, sh shell archive utils. To extract the files from this archive, save it to some file, remove everything before the bin sh line above, and then type sh file. No way. Okay, and that contains a flag, allegedly. So this is this goes against like literally everything, like the principle of like, hey, don't run arbitrary code, just in your shell, unless you if you download it from the internet. Of course, we are reading through this. Um, we are verifying that it's not going to do anything malicious or run any crazy commands. RM tac RF or fork bomb, etc. Deleting files. No, it looks like it actually saves a shell archive and. This is how it could very well be done. Okay, down below, it looks like these are a quote-unquote encoded command. Skipping flag. I've never heard of this before. That's kind of wild. That's kind of cool. Like, hey, uh, it's, it's going to grab shell archive data. And the comment here literally explains how to do it. Remove everything before the bin sh line and then type sh file. So, so there's nothing before this. Uh, so let's, look, we, I, I, I look through this. I don't see any crazy bad commands. It looks like it's just carving through and retreat, uh, unraveling a file for us, like that flag that we want to end up using. So let's do it. Let's fire it up, man. Can I run it? Oh, goodness. Sorry. <laughs> look, no, just sh the flag file in the current directory. Ooh. Flag PDF is whining. It needs UUD code and UUN code. So if you haven't heard of UUN code and UUD code, these are other utilities. Uh, UUN code, th these are used to transmit binary files over transmission mediums that do not support other than simple ASCII data. It's one way to other encode a file. Uh, you m may very well need to install it, but again, it's just wrapping, hey, a binary into a different representation of printable plain text characters, uh, like base64 or some other, hey, encoding schemes. Uh, how do you install it? Super easy. It's part of char utils. So we might just, I might just have to install it. I don't know if you need to on your box, but sudo app install shell archive utilities. Do it up. Try that again done. Now we have a flag file and we can check out what that really is. And that is a current R archive. Excuse me. That's, that's going to be a binary file. That's something that I'm not going to be able to read. Yeah. So sublime text is just going to show me all the hexadecimal bytes that make up this binary file. But what is a current R archive? R is a lot like tar, but it's an archive. Create, modify, and extract from archives. So checking out the man page, we could just extract. I'm going to assume I'm, I'm checking out these options, the command line arguments we could pass to it. I have to assume X is one of these. Extract members from the archive. You can use the V modifier to request that R list each name as it extracts it. Yep, probably verbose. If you don't specify a member or anything inside the file, all files inside the archive are extracted. Sweet. 
Okay, so RXV on flag. And that retrieved a new flag that it probably overwrote. It, it probably just replaced itself, right? Let's run file on that flag file. <laughs> now we have a CPIO archive. Fantastic. Little matryoshka dot. What is this? No, no, same file. Different file? I don't know. Um, is CPIO a thing? That's a command. Right? We could just as well run. Let's check out the man page. Copy files to and from archives. Okay, so if there were archives files again in this, could we extract them? Tack I will extract. So, oh, you or you could use tack tack extract. Read the file from center input or from the file supplied with the tack tack file option and extract files from it or list its content to center output. So, let's can I can I use CPIO tack tack file tack tack? Oh, no, 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 um, flag extract. Flag not created, newer or same age version exists, two blocks. So the, okay, so that's probably not going to override itself. I think that's the problem. The file name as a collision there. So let's move flag to flag.cpio. Yeah. So then we could run that very, very same command, cpio extract, and there we go. It took out two blocks, allegedly, and now we have a new flag <laughs> file. Wow, this is... <laughs> Just like nested compression and archives and shenanigans to... Okay, bzip2. bzip2 uh, is another one that you could use to compress data. Um, I think there's a, yeah, bunzip, where you can extract the archive. bunzip should straight up do it. We could check out the man page for bunzip. bunzip2. Um, okay, it just gives you the exact same thing. Does it need to have a file extension? Yeah, yeah, here it is, here it is. If the file does not end in one of the recognized endings, .bz2, bz, or tbz2, then the program will complain it can't guess the name of the original file and it will use the original name with .out appended. Is that right? Can I use bunzip2 on my flag? Nope. Wait, what? Okay, it did. It did just made, it, it just did it, I guess. So now we have a new file, a gzip archive. And we could check out, hey, gzip, of course, again, another thing you could use. It's gnu zip or gnu unzip, gunzip, as I like to call it. You can expand or compress files. Yet again, gunzip, taking the file name will just allow it to run. Gunzip, I think, does whine. If you don't have the flag, uh, if it doesn't have the file extension, yeah, it, it'll tell you, look, unknown suffix, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. This isn't a GZ compressed file. So what we can do with that is actually move our flag.out into flag.gz. Then now it's a file extension that GunZip will recognize and that should extract it. No output here, but now we have a flag file yet again. <laughs> and now there's even more compressed data. Uh, I should have been keeping track of like the file size as we were carving through this. We, we keep cutting it up, slicing and dicing with new recommendation, new different ways you could uh, compress data or bundle stuff up. Let's, is LZIP a thing? It is. Do I have a LUNZIP or LZIP? Okay, reduce the size of files. Lossless data compressor. I don't, I haven't seen that one often. I guess it's LZMA. Um, decompress, LZ tack D, I'm assuming will, will allow me to uh, pull the, the data out. Let's use LZIP tack D on our flag. And where did it go? Uh, it put a new flag dot out because we didn't used to have that. We used to have flag dot GZ after we, we renamed it. So what is flag dot out? Does this rabbit hole ever end? <laughs> Flag that out is LZ4 compressed data. Do I have an LZ4 command? No. LZ is a command though. What is that? LZ gun zips and shows a listing of gzip to our archive. 
Is that something that Tar could just extract? Can Tar handle LZ4? No, it, it cannot. Okay, so let's do some quick Googling. How do I extract LZ4 compressed data? Yeah, another compression algorithm. Here's a, oh, what? Sista tutorials? Nah, I didn't like it. Okay, LZ4 can do it. Did I not have that command? I didn't. Oh, I need to install it. Sweet. Let's do it. <laughs> you might need to install it just as well. And that could extract with just tack D, it looks like. So it, it, it requires an output file? Or will it just create one? We know we're working with flag dot out this time. I have so many ads running. No, <laughs> you guys don't need to see that. So you, let's use LZ4 tack D on flag dot out. And we do need to specify an output name. So let's call it flag. Decoded 266 bytes. There's no way, there's no way that's a full flag. We still have more to do. LZMA yet again. How do I? All right, Uncle Google, where are you at, my man? LZMA. It's much, again, much like a compression algorithm, obviously, like zip, tar, etc. LZMA. Oh, we'll just do it. There's a command. LZMA is equivalent to XZ. So XZ can do it, which is another one. What? Get out of here. Freaking Chucky? Google, why are you showing me Chucky movie stuff? <laughs> Who knew? My Pico CTF uh, video series was going to be a comedy show. LZMA. You can extract. Can you not? I'm just going to assume LZZMA. Show me the help. Can I D? Can I X? E LZZMA decompress. Oh, it's un LZMA. Look at that. Un LZMA from our flag file. File has an unknown suffix, you jerk. Okay, so again, we should probably give it a corresponding uh, file extension, flag LZMA, and then we can un LZMA that. Done. No errors, no output, but success. We now have... <laughs> I'm not even surprised anymore. Okay, LZOP is a thing. LZOP we can use. Tack D, decompress, or extract. Let's do extract. LZOP X flag. Can't decompress the same file. It needs a different file name. So let's you change that file extension yet again. Flag dot LZOP. Some of these, I have not heard of some of these. So this is a fun roller coaster ride. Flag dot LZOP. No, 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 no. Stop trying to autocomplete for me, Z shell. How about you? We're just going around in circles now. LZD flag. Output file flag it out. Already exists. All right. Okay, okay, okay. I am going to trust this that I'm not clobbering my previous steps because we are very procedural in this. There's no way that our stupid oh, oh, save script is going to allow us to hey, compress this all into one command. No, we, maybe it would be a wild ride to make a Python script that can carve through this thing. I don't know. But let's r remove that. And now we have yet a new flag dot out. And then we have XZ compressed it. Okay, so we can un XZ flag dot out that needs to know its file name so flag dot out can be renamed to flag dot xz to have a proper file extension we can un xz that we have to be close to the end we have to be here that's it good game gg gg everybody <laughs> Oh, <laughs>
Oh, threw me a curveball. Absolutely rolling me here. So this is hexadecimal, right? Um, hexadecimal being base 16. The way we represent numbers is base 10. We count from 0 to 9, and then we start over at 10, where you just add a 1 as the next placeholder for the next digit, and then keep counting up as base 10. Hexadecimal uses these same numbers 0 through 9, but also adds an A through F. So we have a 0 through 15, and it is base 16 hexadecimal, right? Okay, so we can actually uh, modify that. We can actually decode hex in the command line by using a utility xxd. Uh, xxd tac r will reverse some of the output, but you need to print it out. xxd normally dumps things into hex format, but if you want to reverse and decode from the hex format, you have to use tac r and then tac p to print it out. And there, after 16 minutes of nonsense, we finally have our flag. File name manipulation for obscurity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's, let's redirect that and save that as the final flag.txt um, and finish that challenge. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and submit that. And I can see why, you know, maybe that had a lower solve count. Maybe people just didn't want to deal with that. <laughs> But we did it. We soldiered onward and we wrapped up that challenge. And now we're getting close to the very end of the first page on Pico CTF. So uh, I think I'm having some fun. I don't know about you. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you had some fun with me, please do all those YouTube algorithm things. You know, if you could like the video, comment, subscribe. Helps the channel grow. Helps more people see these videos. Helps more people learn. Get education and cybersecurity training for them, for everyone, for the world. So... Yeah, do that. I'm going to get off my soapbox. I love you. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video, everybody. Take care.